Rwanda nationals will soon require no visas to travel to South Africa. Since 2014, Rwandans have found it difficult to travel to South Africa with only those traveling on service passports able to go to the country. But South Africa's President Sue Ramaphosa, who is in Kigali for the Continental Free Trade Area Treaty Signing Ceremony, said Pretoria and Kigali were working to remove restrictions. Relations between the two countries took a knock after the killing of former Rwandan spy chief Patrick Karegia in 2014. South Africa blamed Rwanda for his death and Kigali countered by blaming Pretoria for hosting its dissidents. Kenyan scientists are banking on semen from a dead northern white rhino, Sudan, to sustain this species. Sudan, who died on Monday at the Old Pejeta Conservancy, was the world's last male northern white rhino. The 45-year-old rhino died of old age-related complications. The conservancy said the semen has been stored in anticipation of in vitro fertilization. Sudan's offspring, Najin and Fatu, are the only white rhinos remaining at the conservancy and in the world. President John Magufuli has made it known that his ministers can't miss his meetings when they are invited. While chairing a business council meeting in Dar es Salaam, Magufuli tasked the Prime Minister, Kasim Majaliwa, to explain why the ministers of agriculture and livestock were absent from the meeting. He needed them to answer questions about the dairy industry. A disappointed Magufuli added that he did not know whether his ministers understood what he wanted. South Sudan's government has suspended operations of Vivacell, one of the largest telecom companies in the country. A suspension notice by Juba's communication authority said the company had persistently flouted regulations. Vivasa was launched in 2008 after Lebanon's Fatwatch Investment Group purchased South Sudanese company now in 2007. South Sudan's other telecom providers, Kuwait's Zain and South Africa's MTN remain operational. The civil society in Burundi has accused the government of meting out violence on civilians and organizations opposed to the referendum. They say a man was killed by police in the east of the country for refusing to register as a voter. The police say he died of natural causes. President Pierre Ngurunziza confirmed a referendum vote for May. The exercise is widely seen as one to allow him to rule indefinitely. Uganda's Drug Regulatory Authority is under fire over fake hepatitis B vaccines. The discovery of fake vaccines by Kampala's Ministry of Health has sparked public outrage. The Association of Pharmacy Owners in Uganda has faulted the authority for failing to detect the defective vaccines. Some have called for the agency's top management to resign.